So now that we have our collision detection working and the string hit is being traced to the output window whenever the cow heads that are falling cross the path with the cowboy movie clip, let's replace this trace statement with something better. So what I'll do is I'll go down here and I'll say score plus plus to increment the score variable. And what this will do is it'll increase the score variable by one. And then we'll put that into the dynamic text box. Okay, before we test this out, let's add two more lines. I'll paste them in. And this first line says catch sound dot start. And this will start a sound object named catch sound. Now we don't have this sound object in our code yet, but I'm going to leave it in there anyway for now. And then this one is important, remove movie clip, capital M, capital C, this whole thing needs to turn blue. And then inside the parentheses, I put the keyword this. So this will remove the cow head once the score registers. And what I can do is, let's test this out now. Let's test it out. We'll hit control enter. We move the cowboy. Here comes the cow head. And you can see the cow head is removed and the score is incremented. So that's working out pretty nicely. All right, our collision detection is working and our scoreboard is working. So the next thing that we want to do is make this catch sound work. So I'll copy and paste the code that makes that work. Now here's the code. And then I'll explain what it does. Now I'm going to put it right outside of this function cow move. I'm going to put it outside of this function, but below the variables. So I'll paste it right in here. And you can see here that I've made this name up. Catch sound with capital S equals a new sound object. And this is a capital S. So when you write new sound, open and close parentheses, you have to have a capital S. Then I attach the sound, notice the capital S here on the dot attach sound, and then I need to attach the sound from the library. So there needs to be a sound in the library with the linkage identifier set to this name. And you can see I've put the name plop here. Then you can also set the volume of your sound. So if you import sounds into your library that are too loud, you can modify them. So this will change the sound from 100% to 60%. Let's go into the library and take a look at it. In the library, you can see I've already imported my sound. There it is, a WAV file, catch sound.wave, and I'll right click on it, go to properties, and these are the properties of the sound. If you want, you can compress the sound to an MP3 file, which I've done. So you can see I changed the compression from the WAV to the MP3. You can change the bit rate here. Now the lower you go, the lower the quality of sound. It'll start changing the quality of the sound, right? The quality here, fast, medium, best. So I put fast. And at the end, what you can do is you can test to see how it sounds. So I'll press the test button. And you can see for just this little plop sound, I might as well do MP3 with a lower quality and the quality is fast, right? So there it is, test. Now for the linkage identifier, you click on the action script tab select export for action script and export in frame one and then put in the identifier and you can see that's where I've put it here plop p l o p p so now this is ready to go so I'll click OK and if it works correctly when the code when we have a catch right the cows moving when we have a catch we will increment the score update the scoreboard play the catch sound and then remove the movie clip and see, I'll hit control enter, and there's the plop sound. The cow head's removed, and right, and everything works good. Now, a couple other things to notice in the movie once again, our movie clip right here, notice the registration point of our catcher movie clip. The registration point is at the top near his head, right? That's where the hit detection is crossing the path. And if I just take really quickly the cow movie clip from out of my library, so when we compare the absolute values of the cow head 
And by the way, the cow head in the game gets input at a 50% its normal size. So let me just change this to 50 here. So when it falls down, it's actually about this big, right? And so the registration point on the cow head is also in the center of the cow head. So our math.absolute function is comparing the distance between these two. So when it says x minus, so it's the cow x, right, minus the cowboy x. So in this case, the cow x is, let's see here, 227. And the cowboy's x is 266. So 227 minus 266 will give us about 40. And so if the cow head is over here, it won't register as a catch. So as it falls down, right, once it passes this green line, it starts measuring the values of X and Y on these characters in the code. Once again, I'll just point this out. And that's how the hit detection or the collision detection is working, right? The value of this, which is the cow head, the Y, or there's the X, minus the cowboy's X, and if it's less than or equal to 30, we'll have a hit. And you can see this as it falls. So as I move the character, if I get kind of close, there's no hit, right? But if I get close enough, we have a hit, right? No hit, there's a hit. No hit, let's see here. No hit, right? No hit, hit. So there's the collision detection in action. We've got the sound working. And now it's time to just finish up some of the small details for our game. When do we win? When do we lose? How many chances do we get? How does the game function? Is there a good cow heads to catch and then bad objects to not catch? Things like that, which will make our game a little bit better.